guys and welcome back to Treehouse. Can you remember what our new series is about? What is it? Shout it out. Handling big emotions. Last week we looked at anger. Can you remember? We shook up the coke bottle and it all exploded and we tried to come up with strategies and ways to ask God to help us to not explode. And don't forget, each emotion that we're looking at, they feel quite big emotions, but they're all natural emotions. And part of us exploring them together is just to learn how to deal with them better when they do come around. So today we will be looking at grief. This is a big, big word. And some of you will know what it means and some of you won't. But grief is when you're really, really sad about something. Older children, I wonder if you could look it up in the dictionary and find the dictionary definition. There are lots of reasons we might feel grief. There are lots of reasons we may feel sadness. Some of them small, some of them big. Let me ask my friends what they feel sad about. Hi there. Well, I feel really sad because the other day, my best friend said she didn't like me anymore. <laughs> oh dear. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Uh, uh, hello there. Yeah, well, I'm actually feeling quite sad today because uh, I stubbed my toe and it really, really hurts. Uh. Do you know, I've done that before and it does really, really hurt. And that's okay to feel sad. We've got Anna here, but she's too scared to speak to you. So I'll let her whisper in my ear. Anna, what is it? What's making you feel really sad? Oh, yeah. She says that she feels really sad because somebody in her family, she never gets to see anymore. They moved a long way away and she never gets to see them. Oh, I've got Anna's sister here, Elsa. Elsa, are you feeling grief or have you ever felt grief? I definitely know what grief is because my mum and dad died. Grief is normal, grief is natural. Bad things happen in our lives. From when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, we became broken and we suddenly were plunged into a broken world. But we've got a hope and we have a hope in Jesus. So no matter what we're feeling, we can cling to him. He will help us. He does help us every day, even when we don't know it. He pursues us and he wants relationship with us. Let me show you a demonstration of what grief is like. You can try this at home. Sometimes when someone moves schools, we really miss them and we feel grief. Maybe your pet goes missing or even dies and you feel more grief. Growing up, things change and that can bring on grief for our past. If our parents argue and fight all the time, we can feel sadness and grief too. We may have experienced something in school that makes us feel grief. Oh, look what happened. The grief got too much and flowed over. So what do we do? What can we do if we feel sadness and grief to stop it from overflowing? Let me give you some ideas now. I'd love you to talk about them with your families and see which ones would work for you. We can talk to God and to share with him how we're feeling. And that will empty a bit of it out. We can give somebody in our family a big hug. It's going down. We could tell somebody that we trust what is happening. Ask our parents to pray for us. Mm -hmm. 
suddenly it's not looking as full anymore. I want you to do something together today. I want you to write the word grief in the middle of a big piece of paper. And I want you to come up with different strategies for what to do if you're feeling grief. Work together as a family and discuss. Maybe you could have a go at the demonstration and talk about some of the things that make you sad or maybe things that you're grieving for and pour some of the water in or out of the jugs. Jesus and the Widow's Son From Luke chapter 7 verses 11 to 17 The town was rising up slowly in the distance. Walking along the road, leading a large crowd, was Jesus. He was setting a steady pace as he made his way towards the town. The crowd, who included his disciples, had just seen Jesus show his power and his care by healing a servant girl with just a word. As they approached this new town, a town called Nain, they wondered whether Jesus would have another opportunity to show how powerful and caring he was. They wouldn't have to wait long. While Jesus' crowd was still some way off, there was an even bigger crowd coming slowly out of the city gates. As this crowd walked, you could hear the cries and screams of people in mourning. Leading this procession was a widow bent over with sorrow. She had tears streaming from her eyes, and she looked like someone who had lost all hope. Directly behind her were four men, who marched slowly in unison. On their shoulders they carried a coffin, the coffin of this widow's only son. Her whole life seemed ruined and without hope. Slowly and steadily, the procession moved forward along the road that led out of the town. The cries of anguish continued to echo loudly in the air. It wasn't long before the crowd with Jesus saw the funeral procession. Quickly, the crowd coming towards the city moved off to the side of the road. They all had their heads bowed with respect as they saw the widow leading this procession for her dead son. Everyone stood off to the side except for one person. And Jesus stayed standing on the road directly in front of the widow. When he had seen this lady, his heart went out to her, and he felt such care and compassion towards her. He reached out his hand and said in a soft and gentle voice, Don't cry. Don't cry? To say don't cry to a woman who had just lost her only son? How cruel these words could have sounded. But when Jesus spoke these words, he wasn't being cruel. Jesus could say them because Jesus is the one who has all power, and he cares for people. The men carrying the coffin stood still with shocked looks on their faces. What were they to do? They watched, growing more and more nervous, as Jesus walked up past the widow towards the coffin. Slowly he raised his hand and he touched it. The mourners and the widow gasped in horror. For a stranger to touch a dead man's coffin, it... It was just wrong. Then Jesus spoke in a firm and steady voice. The words echoed around like thunder. Get up! He commanded. Get up? To say get up to a dead person in front of their family and their friends, well, that's just cruel. And it's also stupid. Dead people can't get up, they're dead. But when Jesus said these words, they weren't stupid and they weren't cruel. Because Jesus is the one who has all power and Jesus is the one who cares. The men carrying the coffin were horrified. How could this man say such a thing? They were thinking about putting the coffin down to push the man away when... They felt the coffin move. And as they slowly lifted their eyes, the widow's son sat up and began talking to them. 
gasps and screams and cheers rose from the crowd as they realised that this young man was no longer dead. He was alive! Jesus had shown his power by raising a dead person back to life. The crowds looked on as the coffin bearers quickly put the coffin down. They stood there in astonishment as Jesus reached out and gently took the boy by the hand. Slowly, Jesus helped the boy step over the coffin edge and onto solid ground. He then led the boy towards his mother. She put out her arms carefully, unsure whether all this was happening or whether it was just a wonderful, wonderful dream. As she touched her son with her own two hands, a sudden wave of happiness came over her. This man, Jesus, had cared for her so much that he had given back her son, her only son. Soon the sound of partying filled the air. People were shouting and clapping and jumping up and down. Cheers and praises filled the sky. As people considered what they had just seen, they were overwhelmed with joy. They had seen Jesus show in the most amazing and spectacular way that he cares for people who are hurting. But even more than that, they had seen that Jesus had power like no one else. He could even bring the dead back to life. And so they praised him loudly. I want to encourage you today whether you're grieving for something or you've never felt grief in your life, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. He loves you and he's with you and he will never leave you. Let's end with a psalm today. Psalm 23 verse 4. I may walk through the valley as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me. What a beautiful, encouraging psalm for us to cling on to, even when we're feeling some really big emotions. And don't forget, we would love you to continue with your artwork this week. If you would like to come up with a piece of art all about grief, then we can showcase it at the end of the month outside our church building for the whole community to come and see. Again, you can do it in pencil, felt tip, paint any medium that you want and we will try and scan it in and to piece together all the emotions that you guys are feeling throughout this month. We'll see you next week.